Hello there, God's very best people who are made in the image of God, who are the apple of God's eye, and welcome to the first edition of Sister with the Word for the year 2020. It has taken this while because we thought it wise to encourage ourselves to get our personal work with God and our work for God right through weekly encouragements in Meaningful 5 Minutes with Mommy Reads before we can come along to encourage ourselves from a sister to a sister through Sister with the Word. As you know, Sister with the Word is a concept where sisters in the Lord encourage other sisters to get it right as far as kingdom matters are concerned. Yes, that's because Galatians 3.28 makes it clear that there is neither male nor female as far as kingdom services are concerned. And so don't go thinking that because you are a woman, you don't have a role to play in kingdom service. Also remember that Sister with the Word is not only for sisters because brothers can also learn a thing or two and sister with the word today we are looking at something that is becoming predominant in the world today we hear of many cases of rape of domestic violence of abuse and there is really no listening here there is nobody to talk to with respect to the stigma with respect to the things that come along with that and in effect if mothers can get up and begin to improve the communication to improve the dialogue the discussion between themselves and their children, especially their daughters, we think that many things will get better. Many things will improve with time. The Bible makes us to understand, according to Proverbs 22, verse 6, that we should train our children, that is boys and girls, in the way of the Lord, so that when they are old, they will not depart from it. And so our guest speaker today is not a new face to the program, Sister with the Word. She's an example of somebody who is described in Titus 2, 3 to 5, of an elderly woman who is encouraging, teaching, and admonishing the younger believers on how to go about family matters, kingdom matters, and of course, biblical principles, especially in times like this. The lockdown has come and is slowly but surely getting over, but it is time for us to take time off to improve our communication with our children, especially our daughters, so that when we begin to dialogue with them, we will also be encouraging them to dialogue with their Heavenly Father. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to Pastor Mrs. Sufi Kole from Germany so that you can get more insights on how to improve the communication between you and your children. I'll be right back after her present. Welcome once again, and God bless you to sisters with the world. Hallelujah. I'm Sophie Kohler, co-pastor of Christ Ransom Church, Cologne, Germany. Hallelujah. You are welcome to this series of talk, series of today. We will be talking today about how to improve our communication with our children, especially in this time of lockdown. Hallelujah. I want us first of all to go to the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's read from John chapter 15 from verse 12. Hallelujah. He say, this is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can show is to die for his friend. You are my friends. If you do what I command you. I no longer call you servant because a servant does not know what his master does. Amen. But I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are talking today about improving our communication with our children. For us to improve our communication with our children, the first thing that comes in play is love. For us to be able to talk with them, we must be able to show them that love. Not by spoiling them with gifts or with things, but by being there for them. Love is not all about giving something out but to others, but it's also about being there for one another. Hallelujah. Now is an opportunity during this lockdown period that we spend time with our children, we try to get to know them. For some of us that have not gotten time to really know who our children are or, I mean, spending time with them to know what they like, their likes and their dislikes. Hallelujah. So this is a great opportunity. Jesus made a statement very clear here to the disciples. Say, I do no longer call you what servants, but I call you friends. For friends do know what their friends do. 
but servants don't know what the masters do. Amen. So for me to know what my child does or for my child to know who I am or for me to know who my child is, I need to bring it on a friendship um, basis. Uh, my child needs to become my friend, but not the friend that gets to the level that there is no sense of respect, but a friend that we can talk and share things and open up our mind. I know most of us, some of us mothers grow in a culture where mothers to find themselves only spending time with other mothers and not with children children it's not common that children sit with their mothers and talk about some really pertinent issues in life hallelujah so but we are in a culture and we are in a generation now that those things are very very important for us to do amen in order to save our generation remember your children are a blessing they are a blessing to you hallelujah they are your destiny they are your generation amen they are only going to bring out whatever you put in them so if you sow a seed of love into them they will also what show a seed, so also give out a seed of love for that to their children remember the way you raise up your child is the same way the children are going to raise up their own children so it is high time for us to make corrections especially when it comes to communication some of us parents we do not really talk with our children the only time they hear our voice is when we are telling them what they should do and how they should do it or where they should go or what they should not do amen but kind of like talking having fun with them really getting to know them he said, I do no longer call you servants, but I call you friend because you know me now and I know you. And everything that I know from the Father, I have revealed to you. What is it that your child knows about you? What is it you know about your child? If you, you can't really say some really important things that you know about your child or your child can't really say some important things they know about you, then truly, honestly, there is lack of communication because only when we spend time with one another, there is a, 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 a room for communication and then we get to know one another. Hallelujah. I was just here yesterday, like we play with my children, we uh, playing a game. My daughter just came up with a game and said, Mama, I want us to play the game. Um, uh, that is like let's all guess who, if we really do know you we need to know some we need to we need to get some kind of things that you like and i was like okay let me see how the game goes and she got a paper and a pen and like kind of was asking all the other brothers and sisters okay we want to know who knows mama best and they were asking some kind of question like mama's best color, what's her favorite music, what's her favorite meal, what does she like to put on, how does she like to... And I was really kind of like really impressed that <laughs> they, some of the answers they were giving, I was like, oh, so you people have been observing to some extent. It shows that there is a room or there is a space of communication. Amen. It means they have got to know that they got close to you that they know exactly the kind of things you may like and the things you may not like. Hallelujah. That's how we get to what When you get closer to God, God gets closer to you and you get to know the mind of God about you. It's just the same as a father and a mother. When you get close to your child, your child gets close to you, closer to you. You get to know each and other's need. Hallelujah. And then a child will not be scared to come to the mama and say, Mama, this is where I'm hurting. This is where I am. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm um, finding comfort. This is what is going on with me. This is my difficulties. These are my struggles. These are the things I find joy in. The child will not find difficulties in sharing those things with you. But if you are a mother that is so close and quiet and don't share your things with your children or don't talk with them, then you give them the room also not to tell you or expose to you whatever thing that is troubling their mind or things that are in your mind or issues that are really what troubling them maybe in their school lives or maybe with other friends and other um, uh, people around about them then they become they become close and can't tell you exactly what is going on in their life but for you to get close to them for you to get to know what is really going on in their lives you need to get close with them just like jesus spent time with his disciples Amen. The disciples spent time with Jesus in order to know exactly the vision, to understand the vision and the mission. Amen. So you need to understand that you need to spend time with your children. This time of lockdown is not just a time you are like, you are like only like commanding or 
the children around and making the feeling that is very making the home very uncomfortable for them no it's a time that you need to also withdraw pull back and say let me leave them let them be and let them share their love and share the love the way they want it amen and play with them spend time with them talk with them on issues that they may not even be on the first place really want to talk with you depending of depending on your communication amen basis with the children how far you have been with them amen the bible makes us to understand that love covered a multitude of sin some of us mothers we are really lacking in the communication with our children we find it difficult talking with them we find it difficult sharing things and ideas with them it's not all it doesn't begin from when the child is an adolescent it starts also from their childhood from the childhood, we already understand how are we talking with them? Are we only commanding them? Are we only telling them what they should do? And they never get to even get that space to say, I want to say something or I have something to share with you. Sometimes some of us coming back from work, we are tired, we are we are worn out, we we'll come back home and you are just struggling to make food for the home. You are struggling to put things together. And after the day has gone down and you send your children to bed and you you just go to tell them, okay, please turn off the light, good night, and you hear one of your child or your child or children, one of your child just say, Mama, can I talk with you? Or Mama, can I tell you something? And some of us mother sometimes because we are so tired and what you say, hey, I don't have time now. I'm not ready for that. Please, please, we can talk tomorrow. Sleep. I'm tired. See, you've just missed that golden opportunity. That was a time that that child wanted to open up. That was a time that child wanted to tell you something. Sometimes it might just be, maybe the thing is not even something very important, but that is how he or she wants to creep into your heart. So if you say, Mama, can I say something? And you're just like, no, close the door. I'm not ready for this. We talk tomorrow. Today is over. It's over. I'm telling you tomorrow you ask the child what he wants to say. He doesn't say it anymore. Or if he wants to say it, it's not like when it came into his or her to express the, uh, her mind to you. So as mothers, we need to work really calm down. Because if the children go astray, most of the time the blame goes to the mother. Whether you're guilty or not, it goes to the mother. Because the mothers are the ones that bring need to pull the children closer. This is why even when sometimes children are going through abuses, they can't talk to the mama. They can't tell them anything they are going through. Because sometimes the mothers always just see everything too wrong. You are just being negative, negative about the child. Being negative, negative over every situation or everything about the child. And you expect the child to open up to you. It's difficult. The child cannot because the child knows that no matter what he says, you are always going to push back the blame to him or her. Amen. That, oh, you were at the wrong place. You were there at the wrong time. Why are you doing this? Why are you moving with this friend? Why are you doing this? Oh, you see, a lot of critics, when you criticize and criticize and do not even spend time to understand who your child is, it makes it difficult for the child to open up to you. The child will prefer to talk to somebody who has a listening ear. Amen. It might be so difficult at times, but please, we have to work. Calm down ourselves and try to open, listen, give a listening ear to the child and listen. What do you have to say? Sometimes maybe you just want to turn off the light for them to sleep. And the child says, Mama, I want to say something. And you are rebuking the child not to say. And you are surprised that maybe you just like, okay, what do you want to say? And the child just says, Mama, I love you. Ah, it's a golden word. It's a golden word. The child is trying to appreciate you. So as parents, we need to learn to open up to the children and also we let the children to understand what we want from them. We teach them the word of God from childhood. Amen. Don't only take your child to church because you are going to church. Don't only take your child to church for the child to go and stay at the Sunday school and come back. And you don't even ask the child what they study in at Sunday school. You are not even concerned about what they did in Sunday school. The, the day is over, we went to church. No, it's not all about going to church. Once your child has come to the age, has, has come to the age of understanding good from bad, wrong from right, 
You need to start putting the child down and teaching the child the word of God. You have to bring that child up in the fear of the Lord in the way that the child herself or himself will get to the point who tell you, Mama, I like to give my life to Christ. Don't force Christ on your children. Because you like going to church does not mean that the children are bound and becoming like you. Let them be free. Let them feel like they are going to church because they love the environment and they want to be there. Not because mama wants it. Not because papa wants it. Because I'm telling you, if it's because mama wants it, because papa wants it, they are just waiting for that moment where they can make decisions for themselves. And you are surprised why you stay. You will be preparing to go to church and your 18 years girl or your 16 years girl or your 15 years girl is at home and say, I don't feel like going to church. Amen. You have to also understand. It's not all about what you want as a mother. It's also about how do I make him or her happy? What does she want? It's very important. Let's spend time with our children, communicate with them, talk to them about the love of God, bring them to that point that they come to know Christ for themselves, not what, not because of what you want them to, to do or to, to say, but because they have found love in Jesus. Hallelujah. Spend time with them, study the word, pray together, share some things in the mouth. Go shopping with them. Go shopping with them. You can go with your child shopping your daughter. You say, you know what? I want us to, to buy something together. Let's just buy the same look. Amen. You can get the same trouser together, the same t-shirt, the same thing. They feel cool. They love it. They want it like that. That's how you are creeping into their hearts. And you start talking things. About when they come back from school, ask them, how was your day today? What happened? How did he go down today with you? With whom did you go to school? With whom did you come back home? You just get to know, oh, how is that your friend? Who is she? Where does she live? What's her name? What's this? What's that one? Ask all some small, small little questions. It's that's how you build up friendship and relationship and it will better the communication. There's no other, I, 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 from, from my own understanding or the best I can give for the moment, actually, this is really a broad topic that one really needs to break it in different segments. But I'm just trying to put everything together. Amen? I'm just trying to put everything in a rough way together. But the best way to get into a man's heart to get into the heart of the child is by spending time with them. Most of us don't know our children and we don't communicate properly with them because we don't know who they are. Because when I don't know what hurts you easily, what makes you flame up easily, if I don't know those things, I easily get to your, to that point where I'm hurting you, but not knowing that I'm hurting you because I, I am not spending time with you. I don't know what you like. I don't know what, what's, 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 what, what's, what are the things that are interesting to you. So it makes me, it, it becomes difficult for me to know how to communicate with you. I might be communicating in a tone that I seem to me, it's normal. To me, I find it is okay, but when already for that child, it's already annoying, irritating, and it's just something that the child is being pushed to anger. Amen. We remember the word of God, say, parents, be careful, do not provoke your children to anger. Amen. We to do cause them to get the anger or become angry or to wind up. Amen. We do push them to that extent. So we have to understand that it's about you spending time with them not only doing what you want but doing also what they want hallelujah when we do this then we will get to know them then the love will grow and when love grows what communication becomes more stronger amen because it is through the love that this time spending that our communication becomes stronger and the love becomes more even more stronger Hallelujah. So the one of the basic of improving our communication is by time spending. You spend time with the child. Open up to the child and the child will definitely open up to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And it is also important that as parents we give our children some basic rules and guidance to go by because the Bible says we should also discipline them so that they do not what they do not go astray. Don't take love. Love you can love somebody so much, but it doesn't mean you are telling the person the truth. Love is not the truth. The Bible says what? The Bible says what? The truth will set you free. The Bible did not say love will set you free. Only the truth will set you free. Don't love your child too much to an 
then that the child is going astray and you can't straighten up the child in the name of I love you. Sometimes too much love when not balanced also what may cause a lot of problems. But whatever the case, love is being built on the foundation of communication. The more I spend time with you, the more I fellowship with you, the more I get to love you, the more I get to what, know who you are. That's the only way we can be better improve our communication with our children, especially now at this time of lockdown. Try to make some games, bring up some ideas and things that will make you people have fun. It's not all about what learning, learning, have fun. This is the opportunity that I will say God has given us for those that have not gotten the opportunity to spend with their children, this is the opportunity for us to spend time that we may get to know our children. So do not see the lockdown only on the negative side, but also enjoy the positive, positive side of it. May God bless you and God strengthen you. I hope this has helped you a bit. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And may the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord keep you and give you grace. Amen. Grace, abundant grace to build your love on communication with your children. They are a blessing to you. They are the crown of your glory. Strengthen them. Be with them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. That was very rich, I must say. I learned a lot. And I hope you did same. Love is the underlying factor in everything that we set out to do in life. If we love our children, then we should be able to listen to them. We should be able to attend to their needs to the best of our ability. Sometimes it can be challenging because of the things that we are called to do as parents and as workers and as even people in the society. But one thing is certain, these children did not write an application letter to come to planet Earth. And so if we as mothers fail to listen to our children, if we as mothers fail to give that room for discussion, that room for dialogue then we will be pushing our children into the world and there will be dangerous consequences consequences which we too will be a part of and that explains why if you are out there and you have not yet given your life to Christ just bow your head and say Lord Jesus come into my life wash me with the blood of the Lamb give me the power to live right give me the power to hate sin give me the power to increase and to improve my communication with you as my Heavenly Father and with the children that you have given me and behold, you will be making a difference in your life in times like this, when things are going in a direction that man has no control over. Beloved in the Lord, remember to give a listening ear to that child. If you have not already been doing so, it's not too late to get it right. If you have already been doing so, it's not too late to make it better. If you have not been getting it right, make amends and get on track before it becomes too late. Remember to share this video because the Bible remains the road Jesus the code, sin the obstacle, and heaven the destination. Shalom, good people of God.